1962, NASA's Apollo program performed nine missions with six landings on the moon's surface where 12 brave astronauts walked on our nearest celestial body. The Apollo program ended in 1975. Growing up in North Alabama, there were signs of the space industry all over the place. From the Space and Rocket Center, with rockets laying around, to Redstone Arsenal, and of course, NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. And many people in the area worked there. My father was one of those. He was a graphics illustrator for NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. And in 1978, he took me to work for Take Your Child to Work Day. And there, I was able to see drawings of test hardware, of satellites, and capsules like this. And this is one that my father actually drew. And I was amazed to think that those things actually went into space, with people nonetheless. And so I was sitting at his drafting table, creating a masterpiece of my own, when suddenly I heard something across the work area. And then my father said, hey, do you want to go over there and look at it and use it? And I definitely did. So we walked over there. He was explaining it to me technically. There's a lot of jargon I didn't understand. I was in fourth grade. And then I got there and pressed the button. And magically, what I was creating earlier was sitting there, a perfect replica of it. I could not believe it. OK, yes, I'm just talking about a simple copy machine, right? Um, but to an elementary school kid, spending the day with her father at work, something as simple as this can inspire the next generation. And it certainly did for me. So I became an engineer, and now I work at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. And I've worked on many different programs, very exciting work from space lab missions to payload operations, flying rockets, many things. But I want to talk today about the most exciting job I've ever had. So I'm the program manager for NASA's next human mission to the moon. And that's right. So by the year 2024, we will be sending the first woman and the next man to the moon's surface. And we're going somewhere different this time. We're going to the lunar south pole. So who would have thought in 1978 uh, the inspiration that would have occurred at Take Your Child to Work Day that later on I would be leading the nation's program to send people back to the moon. So pulling on the popularity and familiarity of the Apollo program, NASA named the next lunar mission Artemis. Artemis is a twin sister of Apollo and the goddess of the moon in Greek mythology. And so why go back to the moon? Because there are a lot of other destinations that are very exciting, such as Mars. As we can see, first moon, then Mars. Exploration is viscerally within all of us. All of humanity, we're all explorers. And we want to know what's out there. We want to know what we missed the first time around with Apollo. There's more to see. First moon, then Mars. We know that there are technological hurdles that we can overcome with this moon mission that will help us to sustain that program as well as carry us on to Mars. Inspiration. We also know that NASA can bring people together. Great achievements that take you beyond your current abilities and then seeing people land on the moon, 
that's very inspirational. We want to inspire the next generation to go into science, technology, engineering, and math fields for the nation and for the world. We also know that there will be technological spin-offs. We know this because we've done it before. Many things that we create for space exploration come back to improve life on Earth. So the first time we went to the moon, we missed something very important. We missed the water ice. And we know that there's water ice thanks to precursor missions such as the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter mission. It found that deep within the craters, as we're zooming in here, we can see deep within these craters, they're huge cavernous craters, about 20% of the basin floor of those are comprised of water ice. And as you can see, the permanently shadowed regions, when the sun goes over, there are areas that have never, ever seen the light of day. And that's important because not seeing that light of day means that caught within that are the origins and the beginning of the moon. And uncovering that for mankind is amazing. And that's part of what NASA wants to do. Now, why is it important to learn how to capture and use what we can on another celestial body? Well, like right now, we're breathing air. We may be drinking water. We're wearing clothes. Could, maybe we're doing laundry. There's different things that we do every day. Well, we have to take all that with us on a moon mission. And all that weighs a lot, and that's mass. And taking mass into orbit costs a lot of money. And so the more we can learn to use that hydrogen and that oxygen molecules, then the more sustainable our future programs will be. And then, of course, they will become cheaper. And that helps us on that mission to Mars. So the US Census Bureau in 2020 says that there are around 330 million people in the US. And so about 70% of the population is too young to really remember the excitement and the boldness of the Apollo mission. Now, so looking at the workforce of 1969 and looking at the workforce of today, there's a lot of differences. So this is a picture of the Artemis' Human Landing System Program Office. And I am so proud to be the program manager of this diverse and amazing team. You can see men, women, African Americans, Asian Americans, and Hispanics all working together for this common goal. We are far more representative of society than in 1969. Again, looking at the astronaut class earlier of this year from January. Again, same thing, men, women, and minorities. And that's important because we want everyone to be able to see themselves in this mission, whether it's an engineer, whether through the crew or the program managers. And so going somewhere quickly is, is what we're trying to do. And a way to do that is to hold a race. I love races. I love to watch races, track and field, you name it, I love it. So taking an idea from Apollo where there was a race between two countries, the United States and the Soviet Union. And we know the United States landed first. We put a man on the moon and we won that race. So very similarly, we are doing that this time around. However, we are doing it between three US companies. So what we did, NASA wrote high level requirements that we want to go to the moon this is the duration of the stay, and this is where you're going to need to go. And then we put a survey out, and we received responses back and awarded three contracts to Dianetics, to SpaceX, and to Blue Origin, who is teamed with Draper, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. And I will tell you, those three companies that you see provided us with innovative ideas that we never would have come up with on our own. Very exciting. So what's going to be similar about these missions? 
the similarities come into the crew, the US crew, the astronauts, will be provided by the Orion capsule. Now, they're going to ride on the world's most powerful rocket, the Space Launch System. So the Space Launch System and Orion will launch and take Orion to a halo orbit. The halo orbit is the top line. And the, the human landing systems, one of the three that you saw earlier, will be up there waiting at that halo orbit. Orion, once it arrives, will dock with the human landing system, at which time two crew members will get into the human landing system from Orion. Those two crew members will then go down, descend to the moon's surface, and they will perform a six and a half day stay where we have a lot of science planned for them. Naturally, we're looking for that water ice, right? But we also want to deploy sensors. We want to collect samples, regolith, rock. We want to take pictures. We want imagery. We want video. We want everybody to be able to see all this. And we want to bring that back. So after their six and a half day stay, they will return to their human landing system and it will ascend or take off from the moon's surface. It will rendezvous again with the Orion capsule and the Orion capsule will safely return it to Earth. Now, for future missions, there will be a gateway, a lunar outpost, and that provides us access to broader areas of the moon and that will help us to have a more sustainable mission which is a goal of Artemis and the human landing system. So we know that space exploration will create new technologies that will improve life on Earth. And so how do we know that? Well, we know it because it's happened before and we've done it before. For example, the Apollo era spacesuits, the fabric from it, you can find it as an offshoot of the Denver Airport and the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The pedals that you see that go back and forth. It's a translucent type material, very lightweight. It lets light in, but it retains the thermal or the heat conditions within. And of course, 40 years or more of technological spin-offs that have helped to improve life on Earth. Many of these have touched so many people. Camera on a chip technology that's found all over, just ubiquitous in smartphones, digital cameras, aerodynamic improvements for the trucking industry and for planes, precision GPS, memory foam, other materials that have improved life on Earth, freeze-dried foods, and nutritional supplements, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI technologies, and cochlear implants, all to improve life on Earth. I know I've been personally impacted by many of these, Many as of, many of us have. And we do this again for all of humankind. It reminds me of NASA's vision statement. We reach for new heights and reveal the unknown for the benefit of humankind and for everybody. And so it is time. It's time for us to return to the moon. It's time for this generation to see the excitement that a moon landing can provide. So what if we hadn't gone the first time? Let's say, what if we hadn't have won? Would the US still be the technological superpower that we are today? Would we still be the economic superpower and superstar? A country that can harness the energy required to leave Earth's gravity safely with humans is a force to be reckoned with, for sure. We know the Artemis program will pick up where Apollo left off. We know that we will help to rewrite textbooks to fill in the gaps, that beautiful water ice that we didn't even know was there the first time when we went with Apollo. We've also seen that NASA um, is important for inspiration, for inspiring the world and bringing the world together. We do it for exploration, we do it for inspiration, 
And we also know that it's important to continue to innovate. So pretend that you're standing on the moon and you're looking back at this beautiful Earth. It reminds me that we are one, we are whole, and that we have more in common than we have differences. When I look back at the world of 1969 and the issues that we had, and then I look at the issues that we're having today, it reminds me that we do need to come together for unification and for goals greater than ourselves. And the moon can do that. The moon does not discriminate. It's here every day for all of us to see. It's here for all of us to enjoy. It's Earth's satellite. Some people even believe it was part of Earth at one time. And we want to find out more. And so it's time. We are going to the moon. We have the materials. We are ready. It is time for the Artemis generation. You and I and everyone alive are the Artemis generation. And we are going to the moon. Are you in? Yeah.